Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Coach Josh. Welcome to my Facebook Live. Come on in, come on in. I'm excited about today's uh, topic. I was minding my own business once again. I felt compelled um, to share a message. These past couple of days, I've been I've been um, dealing with uh, zeal and dealing with uh, righteous indignation, dealing with uh, anger that compels. So I wanted to kind of share some points real quickly on how we can really have the right kind of anger um, that compels us to move. So come on into my Facebook Live. Thank you guys so much for joining me this, this Sunday afternoon. If you're watching this on uh, Facebook Live, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your scrolling um, to jump in or uh, not notif um, noticing the notifications to be able to jump into this. Uh, but do me a big favor. Go ahead and share this broadcast to as many people as you can. Send it out to uh, uh, your groups, your Facebook pages, your, your family, your friends. Thank you guys so much for doing that sharing. Also, comment below. I would love to see what you have to say about this topic, about being mad enough. But if you're watching it on YouTube, want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, feel free to go in the description box below. There's some links for you to better uh, uh, get involved. You can give, get involved if you're in the Charlotte area, as well as get me out to your city. But also, feel free to share this broadcast as well. I would love uh, uh, um, to get this message out to as many people um, to inspire us to move. But also, feel free to comment below and talk about what kind of anger should you have or where should your madness um, be led towards. But if you listen to this on Google Play and Apple Podcasts, I want to say thank you guys so much for listening. If you're watching this right now, you want all the streaming of all the messages I've ever done. Well, not ever. Maybe the last 200 messages. Feel free to go to SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can get all these messages in downloadable form. So thank you guys so much for watching from the Philippines, from Chi-Town, uh, for wherever you're watching. But let's get right into it. Um, um, the last couple of days, like I said before, I was dealing with um, um, the, the vials and the, the ills of our society and, and then thinking about um, um, the, the, the anger that's in the air and the, and the, and the madness that's, that's moving around us. And I, and I thought about um, the church's place, um, our place in, in moving in the madness and, and moving amongst the denseness and the tenseness of our climate. And, and God kind of gave me this quick, quick, quick message. Uh, I'm doing it as quickly as possible um, that will motivate us to have the type of anger that compels God's people. So I think, well, let's get right into it first off. I think the problem when it comes to us is that either we're not mad enough or we're too mad. The problem in our culture is that there's many believers who are not mad enough. They're not moved by anything. They're too comfortable. They're, they're not mad. Nothing pulls and nothing compels. And even Jesus' zeal for God's house compelled him. There has to be some type of righteous, is righteous indignation. Something that makes us sick and tired. Something that makes us want to move. Something that makes us want to go. Something that motivate us uh, to actually move on behalf of God. The sad thing is that there are so many people who are not mad enough. They are comfortable. They are okay with the status quo. They're they're okay with what's going on. The cause to that is that many people are too comfortable. They're too comfortable. Life is too good. Life is all right with them. They're not even connected with the with the culture, connected with the Christ, and connected with their community enough to be able to feel the heartbeat. God wants us connected, not only connected to Him to feel His burdens on His heart, but to be connected to our culture and to say what is going on in my culture that I can provide the solutions. For. I got to be connected to a body of people so that when I see my brother sick and my sister going through, there's a certain type of righteous indignation that compels me to be God's solution. My question to you is, what problems have you solved? The core of solution making is the anger that resides. There is something that makes you mad that says, you know what? I don't want this to be evident in my world. I don't want this to be evident in my life So, or, or the life of those around me. So I'm compelled to be a solution. I'm compelled because of my righteous anger to say this must change. The other thing is some people are just too mad. <laughs> They're always combative. The cause to that is being overly combative. Everything makes you upset. Everything makes you angry. And God wants us to find the balance. He doesn't want us too angry or not angry at all. He wants us to have a heart, a burden after what God cares for. When was the last time you checked God and asked God, what is on your heart? What makes you upset? What is making you, a uh, 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 Lord, here am I, send me. God, what is bothering you? What is my place in culture? What is my place in my community to be? Be able to be the change that I that you need to change the climate of the culture. In order to change to change culture, you gotta change the climate. 
And many of us are trying to change the people or the characters within culture without combating against the climate that's causing the culture to be what it is. We're not supposed to be fighting with flesh and blood. We're not supposed to be combative within culture, being upset with, with the individuals in it or the, the constructive of, uh, of parallels or systems that's in place. We got to be able to look in the skies and the principalities and say, God, what am I supposed to use my authority against? Where What are you using your Christian authority against? Many of us are fighting Christians and people outside of the Christian faith more than the enemy that's after us. We got to change the climate and say, God, I want to be so angry at the way Satan is doing and what the enemy is doing in the culture, in the climate of my culture. Because if I know, if I attack the person that's causing the rifts in the climate, then I'm able to change the characters in the culture. You got to find something to be mad at. Are you mad enough? Is something making you say, I'm sick and tired of living this way. I'm sick and tired of what's happening in my family. I'm sick and tired. And when you're sick and tired, you start warring. Many people are waiting for God to war versus finding our position in the war. You got to say, God, make me, don't just make me over, make me mad again. Make me upset about something. But, but, but we got to make sure that we have the righteous anger. So my question to you is, what angers you? In order to find your purpose, you got to, to some degree, find what angers you. What upsets you? What makes you mad? After you find that, then we can find the right systems to process that anger into movement. But there's four things real quick that you got to be angry at first off. First, there's four things. All of us got something to be mad at. All of us got something that should compel us to move beyond and to be so upset that it compels us into action. Number one, we got to be mad at the sin in us. Before I can be mad at anything else, before I can move in any area that God wants me to move, I have to be mad at the sin in me. I got to be mad at, at what the sin is doing to me. See, God is not necessarily upset with the sinner or mad at the sinner. He's mad at what the sinner is. is he's mad at the sin that that individual is practicing. So what happens is many people, we get upset with, with the sin of someone else, but we don't look at our heart and be like, what is God mad in me? God is not necessarily mad at me. He's mad at what I'm allowing to reside in me. I got to look at myself and say, I'm not going to allow this sin to corrode me. I'm not going to allow this sin to mess with me. So you got to say, you got to look inside of yourself and say, what is in me that I need to be mad enough to get out of me? What is that thing inside of me that's messing me up? See, many of us, actually all of us are the number one culprits at the issues in our life. We're the reason. We're the one that making the choices. That's why we got to get to a place where we say, God, get the sin out of me. But not, don't, but God, let me be, let me be a cooperative and be so mad. See, the thing about madness and righteous indignation is that when you understand what true righteousness is, you're able to see things rightly. When you understand what true righteousness is, you're able to see things rightly, meaning the righteousness of God. Knowing that I'm saved by his righteousness, knowing that nothing that I can ever do can make me completely right with God. The only thing that makes me right with God is what Jesus rightly did over 2000 years ago. That when I rest in that righteousness, when I accept him as my Lord and Savior, and it's so sad that many of us want Jesus to be Savior, but we don't want to be Lord. We want him to be Lord. We must have him to be Lord to save us daily. Jesus doesn't just save us one time. He, but his Lordship is what allows him to save us every Every day, saving him, saving us from ourselves, saving us from situations. That's why we got to get to a place where we say, God, I rest in your righteousness so that in my resting in your righteousness and your saving work in my life, I'm now able to see me right. So many of us are self-righteous. That's why we're blind. Many, the reason why we're blind is because we're self-righteous because we look at ourselves and we think that myself is right. <clears throat> I'm Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with this. I'm a preacher. Uh, when, I, when I see my heart, people look at me and be like, Josh, you must, you must be the second thing since perfect. Now, Josh, you don't never. No, 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 no. I look at my heart and I am scared of me. I look at my heart and I'm like, whoa. See, see the thing about uh, being regenerate and being saved by God is that when you look at yourself, you're able to see, yo, I don't got time to worry about your mess. I got to look at mine. 
I'm so mad at the sin in me because I'm mad at the, at how the old sin has robbed me. I'm so mad that I don't even want the new sin to continue to rob me. Therefore, I say, no, no, I don't got to worry. I don't got to worry about your mess. I'm worried about mine. That's why each and every one of us should be so, so focused or more focused at looking at our own issues than worrying about somebody else. So you got to be able to look at yourself and say, what am I mad at that's in me? What do I need to get out of me? Number two, after you see the sin in you and you become mad at that, no, the second thing you need to be mad at is how the sin is affecting your loved ones. You're not mad at your loved ones. You're mad at the sin that's affecting your loved ones. You're mad at how that lifestyle is affecting your son, your daughter. You're mad. <clears throat> there should be a righteous indignation, not for you to retaliate against the one that's sinning, but you shouldn't be reaching out and trying to remove somebody with your hands first. You don't move people out of sin with an open hand. You move sin out of people with hands put together by praying. You don't go to the person and say, I'm, I'm here to save you from your sin. No, you go to the commander in chief. You intercede for them. You stand in the gap for them. Instead of reaching out to pull them, you go into your prayer closet and put those hands together and pray to God and say, God, show me. And God's going to be like, the best way for me to show you how to take the speck out of your brother's eye is for me pulling the beam out of yours. And when you go to God and you begin to pray for that person, God would then begin to pull the beam out of your eye so that you can be able to see clearly on how to pull the sin. But you should be so mad at yourself at the sin in you that that madness at your sin will humble you, will give you grace. The thing about most believers, we the ones got the big, we have received such big grace, but we don't give out big grace. What we do is we receive the big grace from God, but give little people a drop of grace and say, but we, we become so righteous in our own efforts because we haven't been looking in our hearts for so long. That when we look at other people, we're like, why are you in that sin? Versus seeing how delicately God has pulled the beam out of yours so that you'll be humble enough and have the right type of anger. When you have the right type of anger, you have the right kind of reach to pull that person out gently, graciously, mercifully, faithfully, long suffering. Some of us, we don't, we, we forgot how long we've have suffered that we don't even know how to be long suffering to other people. Next, third. We got to be mad at the system that's affecting our culture. Not only should we be mad at the sin in us or the sin in others, but we should also be mad at the sin or the system affecting the culture. We got to be able to say, God, how can I be a pillar in culture to remove the system, the demonic system that's destroying people? God needs people in the music industry. God needs people in the movie industry. God needs better preachers in ministry. God needs needs all of us in every aspect of society that is not that is not sinful. And you got to be able to say, God, what is that madness? What is that burden that you have placed on me? That when I look out in my culture, that I have a connection to, that you will help use me in that culture. You got to be so mad that you know for a fact, okay, God, I'm not happy with the way this is going on in the industry that, that you have given me the purpose in. God, show me cleverly on how I can change the climate in the culture. Last but not least... You got to be at the you got to be mad at the Satan that's causing it all. See, in order to rid and remove my opponent, I have to respect my opponent. See, people don't have enough respect for Satan. And what I mean by respect, I'm not talking about reverence. I'm just talking about respecting your opponent, knowing that your opponent is wiser than you, smarter than you, more well equipped than you. So when you understand and you respect your opponent, knowing that he's a fallen angel, not a fallen man, he's a fallen angel, meaning that he has ability greater than us in clay. But when we understand that we have such treasure inside of these earthen vessels, that greater is he that's in us than he or she that's in the world or the leader of the world system, then we'll have a right type of anger against Satan and knowing our place and position as humans in God's kingdom to be able to combat it. With these four things, you have enough to be mad over. And this right type of madness is not madness without boundaries. We're not talking about a madness without restraints. We're talking about having the right type of anger or the right type of madness to move. Now, eight things real quick and I'm out your way. Get you back into your Sunday uh, programming. Um, um, how to rediscover and refine our righteous anger. I have eight things that will help us rediscover our righteous anger 
and to refine our righteous anger. God doesn't just want us mad and just making decisions without a process. Once you have found your place in culture, once you have had that enough, I'm sick and tired of this sin in me. I'm sick and tired of this sin in my family. I'm sick and tired of sin in culture. I'm sick and tired of Satan and what he's doing. Once you have garnered up that anger and that righteous indignation. See, the reason why I titled this, Are You Mad Enough?, it's because, man, aren't you sick and tired of what's going on in your life? Are you sick and tired of mismanaging money, mismanaging your time? Are you sick and tired of the mistreatment? That the reason why I'm even mad right now because I've been mistreated and how I mistreated people and my mood swings because the enemy has 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 sought you, has sifted you, has uh, has has seen what. Listen, we should be so mad because we have been mistreated. We should be so mad. Because our privacy has been invaded. That Satan and his demons watch you better than you even know. They know what makes you mad. They know exactly what buttons to push to have your husband to push the right buttons to make you mad at him. To have the right type of buttons pushed. He knows how to use any and everybody, any and everything to get you into a disruption. To get you into a disease. That's why you got to say, I'm sick and tired of the way I've been mistreated. I'm sick and tired of the moodiness based upon the moving of the satanic warfare against me. Therefore, I have to make sure that I refine my anger or rediscover what I should be angry about. Number one, a righteous anger leads to meeting with God regularly. In order to have a righteous anger that compels me to be a solution in my world, a solution in my life through the grace and mercy of Jesus, I have to meet with God regularly. Meeting with God regularly is the number one thing that leads to true spiritual success. I have to ask the question, or not even ask the question, I have to make sure that I meet with him regularly, that I meet with him every day, multiple times a day, that I'm available. Meeting doesn't always mean time and place. It also means availability. It means that, God, there's nothing in my life that's habitually practiced in the category of sin that will separate me from me being available to hear. Meeting with God regularly gives me the ability to be able to handle or feel what's on his heart. God is not just upset with, with sin at large. He wants you to feel his heartbeat about the details of your day. He wants you to be able to feel his heartbeat and say to have the right perspective to see what's in my life today. That that when I feel the, the, the burden on God's heart for Sarah at the workplace, at Kenneth at the workplace, that I'm able to be aware enough because my availability leads to my awareness that every day I'm aware of what God wants to, me to do. Every day. That's why I got to make sure I meet with God regularly and be available for God. Because if I'm always available to him, I'm always aware of what he's wanting me to be aware of. And my level of my awareness leads to proper action. When I'm available, I'm aware. And when I'm aware, I act accordingly. And that's why we got to get to a place where we say, God, I want to meet with you regularly. So that the, so that when I feel your burden and, the, and, the, and your zeal compels me, I'm now aware because of me meeting with you regularly on how to delicately handle the issues, the sin that I face every day, the sin in me. So that when I'm in a situation and I feel, I feel the old me trying to creep up. See, let me, let me teach you something real quick. You don't always control what surfaces or resurfaces. You can't always control what resurfaces, but you can also, but you control the reach of what resurfaces. Meaning, you don't know. People don't just automatically become jealous. Something triggers jealousy. You don't just become envious. Something has to trigger envious, envious. You don't automatically just become lustful or desire, desiring. Something must trigger it. The more you grow in your spiritual faith, the more you're able to tame what's triggered. After you have tamed what's triggered, as you grow, there's nothing in there to be triggered. But what happens is, 
even me in my current state, there'll be times where enviness creeps up. That when I see another preacher succeeding, when I see someone else come, become successful, or even sometimes, like, can I talk about me? I'm going to talk about me before I talk about you. That sometimes I have a, 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 a envy that pulls up. I can't control when it comes up. But I know for a fact I can control the reach of what resurfaces. Then I'm able to say, no, 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 you got to get out of me. Envy in the name of Jesus come out of me. Lust in the name of Jesus come out of me. Pride in the name of Jesus come out of me. When it resurfaces, that means either something has waned or, or, or you're just human. Let's just be real. Not everything's about, you could be 60 years in the faith and still, because the saving, the sanctification of Christ doesn't end until you glorified in heaven. So therefore, you're going to always have to deal with stuff that's trying to reach out of you or resurface, but you deal with it because you're available, because you're aware. Now you're able to say, uh-uh, you're not going to work at me today. Also, when you see a coworker or whatever, instead of being so selfish, you're being able to say, God, why are you leading me to this person? You'll be sensitive enough to be able to delicately deal with the sin or the torment that's happening. Some people are not in sin. Some people are in torment. That we're supposed to be responsible with helping people or, or being the bomb or the healing hand of God to deal with people's emotional, physical, and mental wounds. I have to meet with God regularly. I have to be available. My availability leads to my awareness and my awareness leads to the proper actions. Number two. A righteous anger leads to forgiving my mistreatments. Leads to the forgiving of my mistreatments. Not only do I meet with God regularly, but a righteous anger says, you know what? I ain't even mad at you, bro, no more, bro. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you of my mistreatments. I forgive you. The reason why we don't move, because we have the wrong type of anger. The wrong type of resentment. Resentment builds based upon what has happened to you in your past. Some of us, the reason why we can't be used by God, because we have too much resentment holding us down. You got to forgive those people that was demonically used. See, Jesus could have, imagine if Jesus had resentment against Judas. Would he have reached the cross? If he built resentment towards the Pharisees, built resentment towards Judas, built resentment towards Peter, would he have reached the cross? Some of us haven't reached our destiny because of resentment. We got to be able to lay on our crosses every day. I'm preaching now that, that if any man desires to follow me, Jesus said he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, then follow me. That when Jesus is on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You got to be able to forgive your uncle and say, Father, I forgive him for he knew not what he did. But, but the thing about it is, if he didn't do what he did, if she didn't do what she did to you, you wouldn't be strong today. It's some, the reason why we're, it's our mistreatment that makes us. It's what we have been going through. That's why, don't forget about, don't get so caught up in what you're going through. Survive what you're going through because when you survive, it and you have the right perspective because once you look back or see what you have been survived what you have survived from you're going to look at that thing and be like it was good that i was afflicted i'm glad you'll be able to you'll hug your uncle you'll hug your aunt you'll hug that pastor you'll hug that church family you, wherever you've been hurt you'll be like thank you boo boo thank you bro man you're the reason you were the 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 tools god used to make me stronger so you got to forgive those who mistreated you but you also got to forgive yourself from the mistreatments that you have done listen some of us it's easy to forgive others but it's hard to forgive ourselves we got to get to a place where i say look man listen listen uh, listen because the devil will love to loves to hang over you the enemy loves to hang over you the things you did over people. It's been 20 years and you still feel guilty for not being in your son's life. It's been five years and you still feel guilty about the girls you hurt. It's been 30 days and you still feel guilty of the porn that you watch. Listen, listen, forgive yourself. Get over it. Listen, there's nothing that you can do that can separate you. If you have evidence of the fruit of God's saving work, if you have any evidence that you have been redeemed by the gracious hand of God, get over it. Grace helps you get over. That don't mean you. grace leads you to get over people. He says, don't continue in sin that grace abounds, God forbid. Grace doesn't 
lead for you to continue to get over people, but grace will help you get over what you have done to people. And you're able to say, God, I forgive them for their mistreatment against them against me. And I also forgive myself because I got to clear all of that junk out of me so that I can have the right type of anger against the sin in me, the sin in those I love, the culture that I'm in and the Satan against. I got to clear all of that out, man. Forgive yourself. Forgive them. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care who mistreated you. Forgive them so that you can be faithful to God. Because the number one thing that keeps us from being faithful is the things that we harbor, the unforgiveness that we harbor in ourselves. In order for righteous anger to be refined or for you to rediscover it, you have to meet with God regularly. You have to forgive the mistreatments. You got to be able to forgive those who have mistreated you. And you got to forgive yourself for mistreating others. Go to God today and say, God, I'm sorry. No, don't even go to God and say, I'm sorry. Go to God and say, I'm done. I'm done with the guilt. I'm done with the shame. I'm done with the condemnation. God, I am free. Free yourself today. Because Christ didn't just set you free. He said, you're free indeed. And, and I have to be free indeed in order to be free in my deeds. I'm rapping now. You got to be able to say, I'm free indeed. Because I'm free indeed, now I'm free to be in my deeds. That when I walk out my faith and when I walk out my day, I have nothing pulling me. Number three. A righteous anger leads to the checking of my motives, meeting, mistreatment, and motives. Why am I mad? We got to have the right anger. My motives must be right. I can't just be upset. See, many people have, have different pillars that they become upset with. They are upset with, and, and that's why we, see, the reason why our world is where it is today is because the church has lost it's heart for injustice. But it's crazy how our injustice is against people groups versus angels that have fallen. So what we do, blacks are attacking, attacking white supremacists. White supremacists are attacking the people that's against their platform. Colors fighting color. People fighting people. Denominations fighting denominations. But ain't nobody fighting demons. Ain't nobody coming against principality. Ain't nobody coming against Satan supremacy. We get, we get so mad at white supremacy and black whatever that we're not even fighting against the satanic supremacy. We got to get to a place where we say, what is my motive? Why am I even mad? Why am I even fighting? What, who am I really fighting against? And many of us, we got to be able to say, I'm not fighting anything that's of flesh and blood. I'm fighting the thing. Listen, we've been fighting puppets so long that we don't even know who, who the puppeteer is. We've been fighting puppets for so long that we haven't even discovered who the puppeteer is stop fighting the puppets and fight the puppeteers the puppeteers are demonic spirits you got to have the right motive and meeting with god freeing yourself from the mistreatment leads you to the right motive where i'm fighting on behalf not of the kingdom of the blacks not the kingdom of the whites not the kingdom of the kojic not the kingdom of the pentecostals not the kingdom of the uh, evangelicals but the kingdom of the living god period that's my motive it's to fight on behalf of the kingdom of God, period. Motive must be about God's purpose. And what I got to be mad because my father's mad. I got to be moving because my father moves. I can't be moving because I'm black. Listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I am not pro black. I'm not pro Nigeria. I'm pro God first. Yes, I care about my people. Yes, I care about the injustice of my people. But me going to God first, who's colorless. And if I go to God, who's a colorless God, he will help me be able to be gracious to all colors. And many of us get so caught up in our cliques and what we connect to versus connecting to God and feeling his heartbeat and saying, God, how can I help my people? How can I help the injustice against black men dying at the hand of police officers? How, God, can I fight to if for those who are white? How can I be able to, to, to reverse the stigma that's been placed on my people? How am I able to, to refine myself, to put me myself in the best position? God, do I have the right motives to, for my madness? You have to have the right motives to your madness. You can't just be mad just to be mad. You can't, you can't go to Twitter to find out what you need to be mad about. The re many of us wake up every day to find out what we should be mad at, mad at, at for today. We go to Twitter to find out, well, I should be mad at this today. Well, I should be mad at this athlete today. I should be mad at this thing today. We got to go to God and say, God, what do I need to be mad about? 
in me, <laughs> in my family, in my culture, and against the Satan that's over it. Number four, righteous anger leads to being made new. I got to meet with God regularly, clean my heart, get my heart clean, refine. I got to check my motives. And when I check my motives, that righteous anger leads me to build me. Many of us go to God and we'll, we'll quote the songs from Tone, Make Me Over Again. We shouldn't just be made every now and then. We should be made new every day. That because I'm mad at the injustice in my culture, the injustice because God has laid the burden on my heart. Not Twitter, but Jesus. Not social media, but be me seeking God has laid this burden on my heart that I can't just stay the same. God is looking for people with the right motives, but not only with the right motives, but the right makeup. Are you whole enough, well enough to actually execute in that righteous anger? I got to be made. I got to work out my body, my spirit, my soul. I gotta memorize scripture. I gotta build my muscles. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta make sure I have peace of mind. I gotta be made to the level that God wants to be able to use me to be a solution. You gotta be solid to be a solution. You gotta be, you gotta be ready. You gotta be conditioned for the call. Many of us wanna pursue a calling, but we don't wanna get in shape. We don't wanna get in condition. In order for us to be in condition, we gotta always have our eyes on the Christ because whatever has your eye will determine what you're made of. And when we keep God in our eyes over time will be made into his image and will be a type of Christ in our generation will be a type of Christ in, in our culture and then when people look at the handiwork of the Lord making us then we will be his hands and feet into making and changing the culture not only should I meet with God regularly I'm gonna get through this quick I know you gotta go and I'm gonna meet with God regularly and to forgive my mistreatments and also check my mother after I've been made new I gotta make modifications I got to make changes in my life, meaning I got to make cuts. I got to get people out of my life. I got to get certain triggers out of my life. So we got to become to a, we got to get to a place in our lives where we live below our means. Some of us don't even want to be isolated. We got to be so isolated so that God can get inside of us because so we're so active that we're allowing any and everything to come in our lives without making the right modifications <clears throat> to our surroundings to protect us, to keep us from falling over. Let's keep going. Next, after you have met with God, forgave the mistreatments, checked your motives. The motives being checked leads to you being made new and you have made the modifications in your surroundings. From that leads to proper management. Now you're able to manage yourself. That, that righteous anger has to be refined so that you'll know how to manage it. With what the Superman say? With great power comes with Superman's uncle? Uh, uh, Peter Parker was Peter Parker. Peter Parker's uncle was like, "With great power comes great responsibility." Listen, with the right type of anger, you must have the right responsibility. Are you able to respond? The definition of responsibility is in the word. My level of responsibility is anchored in my ability. Do I have the ability to respond to this injustice? Do I have the ability? And when you understand that you're not able without God, you will always be humble. You'll be able to trust the Lord with all your heart, leaning not into your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledging him. In all my ways, I got to acknowledge God. I don't have the ability, Lord. So I'm acknowledging you. I need I, 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 I need I need I need to be able to respond to this accurately. They cut me off in traffic. I don't have the ability to respond right now. They mistreating me on my job. I don't have the ability to respond right now. I hate what's happening to my son, but I don't have, don't have the ability to respond. So when you always acknowledge God, he will then supernaturally through the spirit of God give you the ability to respond graciously. We need proper management. We need to be able to say, I have this anger. This righteous anger. <clears throat> but God, I need your ability. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Anger, not managed, leads to sin. God always has a right way for you to respond for 
every situation. And if you don't know it automatically through scripture, you don't know it and you haven't gotten to that spiritual maturity where you're able to respond through the leading of the Holy Spirit, you got to pause yourself and say, God, I do not have the ability right now to respond to this accurately. So until I have the ability to respond, I will use my ability to remove myself because I don't want to be angry and then sin. It is perfectly okay to be angry, but what kind of anger? The righteous kind. After that, you begin to manufacture solutions. Once you meet with God regularly, the forgiveness has happened. Your motives are clean. You're being made new. You're actually being conditioned for the call. You made the modifications. And you even managing it well. Then you're able to manufacture solutions. People manufacture solutions with the wrong motives. Manufacturing solutions means how can I use this righteous anger to bring God's righteousness into the world? We need better business owners. We need better ministers. We need better nurses, better doctors. We need people who have this, that, that treasure in their earthen vessel. So that now when you begin to utilize your hands to make things in the world, you're now providing solutions against the sin in you, providing solutions in the sin affecting your loved ones, providing solutions that's affecting your culture, and providing solutions against the satanic kingdom in the world. Listen, we got to be able to say, God, in order for me to reach, I have to be right. And I can't be right unless I harbor or sink in your righteousness. What are you supposed to manufacture? What is compelling you? Because there has to be something that's compelling you to write the books. There has to be something compelling you to starting the business. There has to be something compelling you to do. There's so many hearers and watchers, but no doers. There has to be, are you mad enough? Being mad enough makes you make things. Listen, I'm sick and tired of the way believers are settling in elementary stages. That's why I must teach. That's why I must have 15 P's and 36 M's. That's the reason why I'm coming up with life work and developing courses and writing books and, and creating discipleship resources because I want God's people. I love uh, 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 the, the purpose of John the Baptist. I love that sentence that says to prepare, to create a people prepared. I, my, God, my job in life is to create a people or build people that are prepared for his coming. That are prepared. So many of us are not prepared. There has to be something that moves you to manufacture solutions. After that, making the right moves, man. You got to be able to walk right in this world. When you have the right heart, you have the right movements. When you meet with God regularly, you move differently. When your heart has been forgiven, you move differently. You look at your enemies differently. You look at those who mistreated you differently. When you when you're when you have that righteous anger, man, you you nip those motives in the bud. You you manufacture differently. You move differently because some, all those things that were you have been moved out of you. Thank you. You're right. We must be a people prepared. Are you mad enough? I pray this message was a blessing to you. Thank you so much guys for watching. I appreciate you guys support. I want you guys to go to God at night and say, God, what is on your heart for me to do today? God, what is your, what, what madness Mondays, you know, what you want me to be mad about today? And we're not, we, we talking about the right madness. God, tomorrow on Monday, give me something to be mad about. Give me something. God, oh, I'm mad now. You should be able to look at your heart and say, uh-uh, I'm mad at what's in me. You got to look around you and be like, I'm mad at what the enemy's doing in my family. I'm mad at what my husband and my wife and my kids, I'm mad at what the enemy's doing. I'm mad at the, that's the satanic culture. That's a around me. I'm mad. Are you mad enough to say, God, I'm going to be used by you? Because Jesus didn't flip them chairs because he was a nice guy. <laughs> he didn't flip them chairs because he was comfortable. He didn't flip them tables. There was something 
in him, the, the zeal for his father's house compel him? Do you have the zeal for the father's kingdom to flip these satanic chairs? You should be walking in situations and saying, this thing must no longer keep God's people burdened. This no longer should keep men bound. This no longer will keep, you gotta be so mad. You say, look, I'm, uh, I'm flipping the money changers, the evil that's causing God's people not to come to him. That's causing people outside of his kingdom from coming in. You you got to say, what tables do must I flip today, Lord? Because I'm tired. We got to be tired, mad. We, God's looking for an army. God's not looking for, the church wasn't designed to be cliques. The church was designed to be an army. <laughs> when do we ever thought that we were just some clique in some country club? We are an army of the most high God. God is looking for people who are ready to war. And you got to be mad enough to say, I'm sick and tired of the status quo. Thank you guys so much for watching. I don't preach myself. Um, in a, in a, <laughs> I feel like preaching more, but I, I'm going to stop right now. But thank you guys so much for watching on Facebook Live. Greatly appreciate you guys' support. Feel free to comment below what you're going to be righteously mad at. If you're watching on YouTube, please comment below and say, Josh, Coach, yo, I'm going to be righteously mad at this in my life. I'm going to be righteously mad at, 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 at all these different things. I'm going to be righteously mad at what I'm culture. But I'm not just going to be righteously mad. I'm going to make sure that righteousness is refined and I'm able to do it the right way. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some, description, there's some links in the description box. If you want to give, uh, you're going also give there's links at the bottom below you can give to unplug and our propel mentoring program is starting pretty soon if you want to get involved in the charlotte area come check me out every thursday uh, we have we have a great group of people that you can be a part of also if you're a uh, woman to get me out to your city um, I'm available mostly uh, weekends and um, teacher work days. Uh, so please shoot me out some things you want me to put, go, uh, um, share my gift to your youth or your young adults or your church at large, uh, a conference or whatever. I would love to come serve God leading. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, you're like, man, Josh, I don't got the links because it's live. You can give at IamUnplugged.com. IamUnplugged.com. Um, you can find more ways to get out. And check us out in Charlotte and get involved with the movement. Uh, but I love you guys so much. If you're listening on Google Play and Apple Podcasts, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I pray that you harbor the right kind of madness. Can I pray for you real quick? Let me pray. I ain't give you, I ain't give you a chance to respond, but I'm going to pray for you anyway. Father God, I thank you so much for your people that's watching today. I pray right now, Father God, that the righteousness, the zeal for your house compels them. The zeal for your people compels them. Not just to have anger, but the right kind of anger that leads them to move. Father God, I pray right now that you build such a motivation that moves them beyond their comfortable comfortability or to pull them away from always being combative and to see what they need to see correctly. God, I pray right now that they'll be able to flip tables in this satanic kingdom die on their cross look at their people that mistreated them and say god i forgive them for they knew not what they do and father god if they if they didn't do what they did i would not be who i am and i pray father god they'll have the right perspectives in every situation and i thank you right now father god that they are available from the availability they'll have an awareness and when they have the right awareness god they act accordingly. God, you know I love them and I pray you keep them and have a great madness Monday to March. Them to pray. Amen. Be mad. It's okay to be mad, but don't sin from it. Be mad on Monday. Find something to be mad about because when you find something to be mad about, you'll be the thing that God, that God uses to change. I love you guys. Be blessed.